Hey guys, Brian here with Wolf's Prairie Outdoors. Thanks for stopping by and checking out installment number two in our defensive lever gun series. Today we're gonna to be heading out to CNC Indoor Range and meeting up with Clint Upchurch, former pro shooter, who has done a ton of shooting over his career and really has worked a lot of different platforms, different scenarios. So he's got great insight when it comes to different weapon setups for fast and accurate target acquisition. So we're gonna be using a Trigicon RMR, plain old iron sights, a Trigicon Credo HX 1 to 6 by 24, and a Trigicon MRO Patrol. We're gonna get his opinion on the different setups and see what he would pick for a defensive scenario. So without further ado, let's head out to the range. So I'm joined by Clint Upchurch, former pro shooter, and today we're going to be kicking off our shooting portion of this defensive lever gun series. First off, I want to thank our sponsors, Ranger Point Precision, Hornady Ammunition, and Big Daddy Unlimited for making this series happen, so go show those guys some love. And like I said, today we're kicking off our shooting portion, and first thing is optics. You know, you've got to have an optic on your gun if you're going to be shooting indoors, defensive scenarios, anything like that. You want to have fast target acquisition and accurate target acquisition. Iron sights are a thing of the past. It's still something like a stick shift. You need to know how to use a stick shift. You need to know how to use your iron sights in case your optic fails. But I think there's a lot better options out there, don't you, Clint? For sure. Yeah, it's, uh, we're going to be looking at red dots and low power variable as well as irons. We're going to be shooting all three options today. And we're going to be shooting 357, 44, 30, 30, and 45, 70. So let's look at the options we got today, guys. So guys, when you get your lever gun, you know, iron sights are going to be what you've got stock on the gun. It's up to you to modify it and fit it for your needs. Iron sights are great, you know, people have shot on them for a long time, they get the job done. But when it comes to a defensive scenario, you need something a little more updated. This does have fiber optics, so it's a little bit easier to see in low light, but it's still not going to give you your fastest target acquisition, like with what Clint has here. We've got a Trigicon RMR on the 357. And give us a little bit of your experience, Clint. Yeah, Brian, I believe my preference would be uh, just a, just kind of a heads up red dot sight. Um, I think for a home defense gun, that's probably your best all around setup. Uh, it's probably easier to use for, for most people. Uh, it's a little less involved than say using iron sights. You know, there's just some yep. other things you have to be cognizant of while you're using those where this is pretty, pretty heads up, um, you know, fairly accurate, fast acquisition, easy to use. A guy doesn't need a lot of time to get up to speed with a red dot and uh, I think that's the best all around um, solution. But then you also have other factors as far as, you know, maybe you have to turn it on, um, you know, what if the battery's dead, things like that where that's, uh, you know, where the, where the iron sights would come into play a little better yeah. and, you know, they're always on, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Irons are always ready to go. And then, of course, we've got a low power variable option we're going to be doing as well. And low power variable, I think, is if you've only got one gun, that's a good option. Yeah. Because, for instance, I'm moving to a farm. That gives me the capability to not only use it on one power, kind of like a red dot, inside but if for instance there's coyotes attacking my livestock i can step out the door throw it on six or eight power and pop a coyote at 100 yards without thinking twice about it and i can easily get positive identification at a longer distance so you can't do that with a red dot or iron sights so that that's one place i think a low power variable would come into play so i guess all that's left now is let's do some shooting and see how these things uh, affect our accuracy and target acquisition let's do it all right Okay guys, so the main reason Clint is here is to give us his expertise on the different setups we have here for optics. So we're gonna run through from iron sights up through low power variable. He's gonna shoot each one. Aside from his dad's 30-30 about 30 years ago, he hadn't really shot a lever gun until a few minutes ago. Yeah, maybe 40 years ago. Okay, so, <laughs> so it's been a while. But he uh, he's very efficient with a firearm and he's gonna take us through his thoughts on each of these after we shoot them all and we'll do a little roundup and see what we think. Ready to roll? Let's get it. All right. All right, guys, next up, we've got the 1894 CST with a Trigicon RMR. And this is, I gotta say, my favorite setup of the bunch because it's light, handy, and the RMR, like you said, it's just heads up, you're ready to roll. Really easy to get a sight picture. Quick, quick and easy to use. Yeah. And 357 is just fun. It's like shooting a 22. Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially <laughs> in these guns. Up next.
next guys we have the Marlin 336W with the Trijicon Credo HX 1 to 6 by 24 for our low power variable option and I think you'd agree this is probably better for if you can only have one gun for sure to cover multiple scenarios but it's uh we want to include all options in this to show you what each one does and how fast of a side acquisition you can get because with this you've got to worry about eye box it's not like a red dot where you yeah, what you absolutely. see instantly yeah. you've got to worry about perfect head placement to have not have any scope shadow get the eye box alignment right there's a lot that goes into lining up a, a low power variable and especially when it's not on an ar you don't have that that natural feel yeah. like one of those it, the Definitely. the uh cheek welds a little bit different with this that's it and i think you'd have to have it set up you know for you right yeah. so it may be perfect for you not as good for me you're, you're found kind of searching, trying to get the eye relief right. So, you know, that, to, to me, that's always the, the, the drawback, uh, you know, of, of a variable or a fixed power, something with some kind of magnification or a tube versus more of a heads-up design. Yeah, makes a big difference in the outcome. Yep. All right, let's run it. All right. Alright guys, next up we've got our Marlin 1895 SBL and this is topped with a Trijicon MRO Patrol. The difference between this and the M standard MRO is this has your integrated flip caps and an uh, anti-reflection device. Uh, I like the integrated caps, it makes it a lot nicer. You don't have to worry about keeping that glass protected. But uh, what would you say the main difference is in this and something like the RMR? Uh, for me and my experience, uh, specifically outdoors, the sun, this right here kind of takes the sun out of the equation uh, when the dot's actually in a tube uh, style design. You don't sometimes lose it if the sun's in your face or to your back or things like that. So that's, that's one of the uh, advantages, I guess, to a tube site. Um, still, still pretty heads up, uh, you know, fast to find and acquire and kind of see around and be able to see down range good and things like that. Um, so especially a short tube design versus say what I would call like a long tube like on the on the variable that we just shot. Yeah. Um, there are differences there as far as just finding things downrange. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so so I always kind of refer to that as acquisition. But um, but this versus say a standard RMR style or something heads up, mm -hmm. there really isn't much difference. You okay. know, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, there's just I guess you could say. Um, Maybe pros and cons to each, depending on uh, you know the conditions you're shooting in. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, this is the dinosaur killer. I know you all are looking forward to seeing being shot. <laughs> so uh, let's get to it. All right, guys. Forgot to mention for those of you wondering, we're using a TAT 3D target, and this is the Mario target excellent target for training gives you something more than white paper to punch you know especially for this kind of scenario you need to be looking at a human silhouette it's going to make a difference i think when it comes time to actually pull the trigger if that's what you're using it for and it's just it's a great resealable target and you can replace all the parts on it really good option if you're doing a lot of training so clint out of all the guns and optics setups we have what would your choice be i think mine would be the one i'm holding here uh as far as uh good balance of weight and length uh caliber you know i, I don't know that you want a big elephant gun you know for home defense i think this 357 uh, would get the job done it shoots nice um, you know, nothing about this one I didn't like, or, or even the others, you know, nothing yeah. I didn't like about those, just preferred this one. Um, no question, you know, I'm kind of the guy that says just give me the red dot, uh, especially if we're talking home defense, uh, you know, application. I think yeah. it's plenty, plenty good enough, easy to use, fast acquisition, uh, you know, can be as, you know, as accurate as any other uh, sighting system we've messed with here today. Yeah. So. Uh, this is this would be my preference. This is the setup I'd want to run there. Yeah, definitely. I agree. That's that is hands down my favorite setup. The only thing I would consider adding, but I hesitate to, is a suppressor because you're shooting indoors. But by doing that, you're adding, you know, six inches of length to that gun, and you're already amped up in the middle of the night. You don't you don't want a longer barrel that you're going to worry about knocking a lamp over, hooking on a doorway, something like that. And that's why all of these guns are 16 and a half inches. That's why I didn't include the uh, Winchester Model 94. That's a 20 inch barrel, and the Henry that is a 21 and a half inch barrel with a break on it puts it up around 23. So you're getting really long with those guns. It's just prohibitive to what it's being used for. I think. 
Yeah. But the suppressor would be nice to keep it quiet. Oh, yeah. And yeah. when you're shooting that thing suppressed, especially if you're running 38s through it, it sounds like a pellet gun going off. All you hear is the hammer drop. Really? It's amazing. That's cool. So it uh, makes it a lot of fun. And it's excellent to start new shooters on because of yeah. that. You're not, they're not getting afraid. There's not a lot of kick. And it's just fun to shoot. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, uh, you know, the other thing I think about these guns, not, not really being a, a lever gun guy, uh, you know, kind of the what I, what I would consider a manual action, right? Yep. Uh, you know, when you talk about reliability too, I think if uh, you know if you just learn how how to operate the gun, you know, mechanically what all has to happen, um, you know, you could you could be talking about a pretty reliable platform. Yeah, I mean, the West was one with lever guns. It, it gets the job done. Yep. It'll run dirty and just keep on going. Yeah. Yep. Well, thank you so much for being out, Clint. Cool. Really Appreciate enjoyed it. it, man. And guys, we'll be back. We'll follow up with uh, weapon lights. We're going to put Mario to work again and uh, do some testing and low light scenarios and show you what different weapon lights are like. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give us a big thumbs up for a like. Hit that subscribe button below. Don't forget to check out our sponsors and have a good one, guys.